Hello, everybody. I'm TJ. I'm standing by here on the stage with our first two semifinalists. It's I Kill You and George C. to get some words before their match. I Kill You, uh, first off, uh, yesterday you said you were just happy to sort of make it this far. Uh, do you still have that sort of relaxed attitude, or are you feeling the pressure now that we're right before your match? Not really. I just focus on the next match, and uh, I just like the game, and I want to have fun as well. All right, well, I hope you have fun today, man. And George C, is the C in your name going to stand for Concede or Conquer today? I don't know if Jaina can win. I'll be Gucci. Okay, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, but go ahead, guys. Good luck. Shake hands and uh, have a good match. All right, well, we're going to get into the action in just a moment, but these guys had a few choice words for each other, so take a look. and it is not here, and Sarasi concedes. George C wins the match. Um, my next opponent is I Kill You. I Kill is like a long time friend of mine. Um, I really respect this guy. George C is probably one of the best players in Europe. We respect each other a lot because we just know how good we are uh, at the game. I think he's a very um, calculating player. He likes to think about his turns, what's gonna happen. He's really aggressive. He prefers control decks. Probably his lineup is a little bit better against mine. I have more aggressive decks and freeze mage, which is like really good against rogue. Uh, we know a lot uh, of each other's play styles, so uh, that might be a good thing or a bad thing, and we'll see. Welcome back to the Cash Sets. Hope you didn't miss us too much. Frodan Savitz right back into the action, bringing you guys the first semifinal of the day between George C. and I Kill You. Uh, some, you know, really mature and honestly professional words coming out from George there against I Kill You. And uh, I was expecting a little bit more ch uh, cheekiness coming out from him, but looks like we're the stage is set for a good match here. Oh, yeah. Th these guys honestly could have made it into the finals if the brackets were a little bit different. I would have been surprised to see them there. Um, excellent uh, players, it, both of them are. I would say that I Kill You, based on lineups, is slight favorite, but the Troke deck, it depends uh, how it lines up against the... Uh, how the decks line up against each other, and uh, if he gets bad matchup with it, maybe goes against George's Freeze Mage, he might be in trouble, and that uh, Troke uh, might kind of like drag him down. Yeah, it is interesting. Freeze Mage is pegged, not necessarily the strongest deck to bring. It is a strong deck, but if the metagame bring, like, provides an avenue for a bunch of decks to line up well into it, such as Warrior, Shaman, Hunter, Druid, could be pretty bad. But this is a good start immediately for George. Uh, he gets the Freeze Mage against the Rogue, and that's probably the best matchup. It certainly is. Like, if George C got to pick what first game he wants to get, this would have been it. Like, this is exactly what he wants to with the Mage. That is the best possible outcome. And uh, I kill you here. He does have a chance. Like, I wouldn't count him out just yet, but it's certainly going to be a difficult task. Amazing. Yeah, it's it's really difficult for I kill you, um, primarily because the <laughs> well, his mistakes were made. He understands that uh, one, I didn't want this matchup. Two, I don't even necessarily even have the coin, so I can't, you know, set up this pressure. Rogue benefits off the coin a lot from being able to set up big band cleaves to having additional card to combo and draw more. Yep, and uh, Chelsea looking at an excellent hand. So much card draw in there. Has an Acolyte of Fiend and a second Novice. Wow, and there's also a Loot Hoarder. Mm -hmm. So far, it's looking kind of hard for I Kill You. He doesn't even have a tree drop here. Something like a, just an SI agent would have been fine kind of to keep up the tempo. Yeah, he, he does have the Tomb Pillager, which is pretty important. Azure Drakes do provide um, a lot of pressure to refill your hand and put the damage on. Uh, but, you know, it's like you said, you know, George does also have a good hand, too. You have to depend on the Freeze Mage to not be able to draw and keep up with the card count. A lot of times, the way Freeze Mage can lose this matchup, despite it being heavily, heavily favored, is having those awkward hands. Yeah, I kill you here. Got the preparation from the top, but chooses not to go for any kind of uh, preparation play just yet. Wants to save that for for a little bit later on. Chotzi here looking at four mana. He could just go with the, the couple of draw card draws if he wants to do so. Yeah, uh, do not blame him if he doesn't want to get full value off the Accolade of Pain. It's one of those interesting things with Freeze Mage where sometimes you just have too much card draw and it's almost an embarrassment of riches in a way. <laughs> uh, you have to make sure to manage your mana correctly so you're not like overdrawing and yet at the same time what you're timing on the coin, for example. These are all uh, really relevant things to think about. Oh, wow, I really like this coin Doomsayer from George. He knows that I Cleo is about to be at five mana, probably playing a Drake. 
But uh, like Lee does have that preparation Shadow Strike to use uh, with his dagger to remove the Doomsayer and keep his Drake around. Yeah, it, it is uh, a little bit annoying for George to deal with, but he does see that I kill you. Um, did have to use a preparation there, and it's not using preparation on things like the Gadget Connection here or a Big Van Cleef. Yep, I kill you also picking up that second preparation, so it makes a li it a little bit easier to just burn one here. Jotzi getting the Thighs block out early. We saw him uh, yesterday being a little bit of uh, like potential trouble after he, he after there was a game where he did not draw the Ice block at all. He did. He was able to uh, win it in the end, but uh, this time around he's gonna have the Ice block from very early on. So the problem with the Rogue, despite the fact that you know honestly Achilles has been keeping up pretty decently because he had the Tomb Pillager and the double Azure Drakes. Yeah. But the problem is you can't really kill the Freeze Mage because of the way Ice Block and your damage from the hand is really limited um, to just Leroy. I mean, you do have some burn like Eviscerates, but you often have to use it. So much damage right now. I would expect to see the Cold Blood come out too. You can't really expect to get much more than the, than the four right here. He, he's going to go for the Conceal too, but George C has that Blizzard ready and waiting. It's still very fearsome though. You're at what, 13, or I guess yeah. maybe even less, depending on how you interpret it, this uh, this conceal play. That is so much damage. With the Leroy, if uh, if I kill you, is able to pick up and eviscerate from the top, he would already be able to pop the ice block. I hope you like my invention. Yeah, and that's uh, that's pretty huge. That's what Ooh. you really need. Oh, Frost. That's an okay. excellent drop, George Seagulls. Now he can get the barrier up if he wants to. I'm, I wouldn't blame him for just playing like Blizzard and the Doomsayer here, but Ice Barrier into the into the Nova would kind of work out better just looking at the hands because th there is that potential of an eviscerate from the top. Yeah, and getting the Ice Block popped is such a big deal. Uh, it just means that uh, you, can, you have to play your second Ice Block and then your opponent will always be on a draw to potentially end it. Fan of Knives. So, uh, yeah, still, if you draw Eviscerate, you can still prep into it. Yeah. That is true. So he, he can just get cast the Fan of Knives without the preparation here because he does have that prep for the for the next spell, whatever it would be. You could also consider the Leroy maybe here, but I think it's, it might be better to mm. wait with it for a little bit later on. It is an easy way to clear the whelps by using the fan here. Sap on the Dooms here seems kind of likely. Right, you don't want to let your board go that easily, force him to have another freeze. But yep. still, we're looking for Viscerate as the best case scenario. Yep. Another, another conceal. conceal, that does not help at this point. Yeah, so just do a little bit of damage, try to see if one more time you can keep your board safe. Conceal number two comes out here, and I like it. This is just what you have to do. You have to be as aggressive as possible. I keep even staring at George saying, do you have another freeze? Is there a way for you to deal with this? And the answer is very much so. He's got multiple answers. Yeah, not just one freeze, but he actually has two. And uh, now with the discount from Emperor Thorison, he's not only able to play the, the Blizzard, but also that barrier and it is so important. Oh, and if he didn't have the barrier, that would have been enough to pop the ice block. Oh, yeah. And you can just show how important that is. Um, yeah. Because now he can't really threaten over a couple turns. He's almost out of gas at this point. Uh, he just, he, he, this card needed to be like the gadget and auctioneer. Yeah, that blizzard was really rough. It cleared the entire board. Conceal not doing anything, anything in that case. And I'm looking that at... Situation how important it is just to get this freeze mage win and you just look at the fact that george had to leave shaman up um because he had to ban the warrior and hunter is always a problematic class uh drew is that run moonglade portal and double fair rage is also more annoying definitely not unwinnable but hard it's such a crucial win for george right off the bat yeah but he hasn't won just yet if he keeps drawing maybe some uh, non card draw spells uh, he's a little bit of lacking hand it it's might true. just be a, a weak turn. Oh, Acolyte of Pain. Well, that is a great pickup. Yeah, there's so much card draw, too. He's yet to pick yeah. up, you know, Arcane Intellect, for example, and, yeah. and other things to really help get his engine going. This is the second Acolyte. So he did have some card draw earlier, but uh, like you mentioned, no Arcane Intellect. Oh, the life of a rogue when you yeah. just use up everything you've got and you just have awkward cards on awkward cards. Uh, it's just so difficult. Like, there's nothing that would really look good from uh, Achilles' perspective here. Right. So he's used already one Cold Blood. I, I think he's trying to calculate how much damage if he drew the ideal sequential cards. Um, but Leroy Cold Blood in attack, that is 11 damage. And if he drew an Eviscerate, that'd be 15. So he's still even just a couple points off of popping Ice Block, even if um, 
he was able to draw it. Yeah, for I kill you, catch is an auctioneer is the card that he really wants to get to be able to draw some more cards and try to get something huh. going. Maybe Edwin Van Cleef after that. Um, George C picking up some burn here. He now has two fireballs, so he could just try to burn I kill you out uh, even without the Alex Strasse. Yeah, just set your opponent down to 15. So I think if you pick up the Frostbolt, that is just death because you have the Evolved Cobalt already. Yeah, the Cobalt doing <laughs> going to do so much work here, yeah, adding six damage to that potential combo. Now, this is some more damage. I mean, Deadly Poison can count as, you know, six damage if you attach it to a weapon. So over the course of two turns, IQ, you could pop the Ice Block, I think. Yeah. It's just uh, that's not what he needed. He really needed an auctioneer and then maybe pick up the deadly poison afterwards from the extra draws from the coin and the preparation. But uh, once again, just like last turn, there's not really a good play available to IQ Liu, even though he does have six cards. Well, actually, I apologize. He wouldn't even be able to pop the ice block because Leroy Cobra is 10 and he'd do six over two turns with the oh. weapon. So he'd still be one off even yeah. in two turns. And he would give his opponent some whelp, so that would even increase the damage uh, that George C yeah, is able right. to put out. Yeah, it's very clear that Freeze Mage is on the mission to kill the rogue very soon, just directly using two fireballs and with a lot more firepower that came from. So right now, George C with the old Cobalt and the Roaring Torch. And hero power would be 9 damage from the hand. There's so many draws that would just win the game outright here, but he doesn't get it just yet. Yeah, and he still feels pretty safe. Um, I mean, if he gets his opponent down to even just 9, he could kill him because of the way the Fall Cobalt works. So playing Loot Hoarder is most likely the scenario here. Oh! All right. Well, possible dice lands. He has the burn yeah. he needs right now. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, gonna be the game. And George C takes a very convincing game to one. But make no mistake, this matchup is heavily Freeze Mage favored. Uh, I know this is gonna be an uphill climb for the Star Bracket. Yeah. This would have been a disaster for George C if he did not win this one. It would only have gotten harder with that Freeze Mage. But that's a really key victory for George C. Freeze Mage wins again. A deck that's constantly underestimated, in my opinion, <laughs> at least in HCT. And George C once again piling it to proficiency. Uh, right after this, guys, we're going to come back with game number two, so don't go anywhere. Back in just a sec. Uh, how did you feel after your performance in spring? Most people would feel like pretty sad, but I wasn't too worried about it. Like it's all part of, like a, a learning experience. The winning moment of the preliminaries. Oh, oh no! I want to hear your thoughts. It was a beautiful moment, wasn't it? it? Brings a tear to my eye. It was. It was the, the a beautiful moment of fist bumping. Absolute power. perfection. Yeah. Mm. Do you feel like now that you've qualified a second time, that people are going to be expecting you to win? I mean, some people have said. I have a good chance. Some people said I'm favorite, blah, 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 whatever. Like, to me, you just gotta filter that out and just play the best you can. Like, it's no point getting hyped up by other people or other people telling you to, uh, you know, that you might win. You gotta go and, like, do it. Was well, it tough to balance your life at home with keeping up as being a top level Hearthstone player? I don't know, Hearthstone's one of those things, like, you should retain like most of the skillful aspects of the game, like decision making. Even if the cards change, like the meta changes, you kind of know like sequencing how the mechanics work. So it, it isn't even bad if I get like a week or two weeks where I'm averaging like half an hour a day, an hour a day, whatever. When you get back into it, you just have to apply the same mindset you would. So it's not forgetting that and how you approach the game. You will have sort of a second chance, even if you don't win this, and you still get to go to the last call. Does that weigh into your mind at all? It's like less pressure in a sense. So like when I'm playing my games, I won't feel like I need to win, I need to win kind of thing. If I mess up, that's my own fault. But it also means I'm more likely to make better plays because I won't be as nervous. So sort of like a little bit of an advantage knowing that for all these guys, it's their last chance. But for you, it's not necessarily. Yeah, it feels good, man. Feels good, man. Feels good, man. Starting off with the win. 1-0 over his opponent. I mean, Freeze Mage's Rogue is what you're looking for right off the bat. Usually it's, if it doesn't start that way, it usually ends that way. Like you're trying to corner it, corner it, corner it. You're playing Freeze Mage almost to a fault. And then when you get your win, then you can move on. Yeah, the Freeze Mage has been like the most talked deck in uh, 
George's lineup, and it, it was something that we casters uh, viewed as a potential weakness. But when you get it up, up against the rogue, like that's uh, that's an extremely favorable matchup, and that's the best possible way to start things off for Georgi. I also like to tell a little story about George for anybody who may have missed this in the spring season. But George actually tried to compete in the winter season as well, but he was denied based off the fact that he arrived an hour too late to prelims and missed a check-in. So his father drove him all the way down south to this fireside where he could compete in prelims. Got an hour late, couldn't compete. And oh. so he maybe we would have actually seen a three-season repeat <laughs> performance if he wasn't denied that. But he didn't give up. Most people probably quit, be like, ah, screw it. We tried, not worth it, and I'm, not, I'm just going to give up on Harrison altogether. He came back even better the following season in spring, and now here in summer, he is three wins away from going to the finals. Yep, and this time around, he's going to be piloting his uh, interesting uh, hunter list that uh, includes Knife Jugglers. Knife Juggler is a card that used to be a kind of core card in Hunter, but then after the balance changes, it got a little bit weaker with that uh, at lower attack power, and there's a lot of uh, Hunter uh, specific two drops that have kind of taken its place, but George C still feels like it's a strong card to play. Yeah, certainly. I think Knife Juggler does have its place. Um, specifically, if you anticipate your opponent playing a lot of board Flood type of decks, which Shaman does tend to do these days. Mid-range Shaman is very popular. I Kill You, of course, is running the aggressive variant, uh, but Knife Juggler does have its place, I feel. Yeah, and uh, George C is running that, running that uh, double Unleash the Hounds as well in his uh, deck, and that certainly is something that synergizes extremely well with the Knife Juggler. Being able to not only summon those hounds, but also getting those juggles off for each of them. Urshak also a very interesting um, tech that tends to come in and out depending on how the shamans are feeling. Much stronger against the Ancients of War compared to some other techs. Uh, how, do, how do you feel about Urshak? I really like the inclusion uh, as a one-off. I don't like playing two, multiple Urshaks. Because that, in that case, it, it is still a little bit situational, and if you draw them at the same time, you might not even find an opportunity to use one of them. But playing one, I think it does have a place, especially now that the, you know, like the, the neutral uh, silence effects are a little bit weaker. Urchuk seems to be the way to go. Yep, uh, Urshak can definitely be pretty strong here. And look how it's set up for I Kill You. He has got his Flame Wreath Faceless on the board, unchallenged, and Hunter has to play subpar minion in contest for it. Yeah, Chotzi really up against it here. That Flame Wraith Faceless, it gets nine damage in right now, and unless Chotzi kill commands it, it's going to get another nine, or at least seven. Yeah, but I guess it's sort of um, picking your poison here. Yeah. Um, if you get the free trade on the Flame Tongue, you're still going to take at least 10 damage from the board. He yeah, he just has to play the high man here. The way that it lines up is that next turn, when he is going to have 7 mana, he is able to play both the Houndmaster and the Kill Command, but it might be too late. There's the Rock yeah. Biter for the Doom Hammer. So I kill you if he wanted to. He could put Jotzi down to one health point <laughs> already on yeah. turn 6. He also has the opportunity to just play Tuskar Totemic and the thing from below. The Tuskar Totemic will reduce the cost of thing from below to three. Um, and then choose to be really aggressive. The, the problem with Hunter boards is even though the, the minions themselves aren't the most amazing quality, cards like Savannah High Main and Fist of Wolf are just such a headache to trade into yeah. that you'd rather just ignore it and let your opponent deal with your board. I, I would personally maybe lean towards the Doomhammer Rock Biter because Joshi does run that double unleash. But uh, if just going for the Tuskar Totemic and the thing from below, it's going to be so much power on the board that it's uh, it's really hard to, for George C to clear, even if he had the perfect cards. What's the punishment for either play here? I guess, what, what, what's the worst case scenario if you go for the Rock Biter Doom Hammer? You do set him to one, and yeah. Hunter doesn't really heal, so you're going to no. forever be like, on a draw to win the Last game. Houndmaster, as it is, this ends up being the much stronger play with, with the way that these hands are. All right now, because there is no Unleash, and there is that last Houndmaster, so the Doomhammer would have been stopped by it. Oh, okay. Kill command. And the Houndmaster allows a proper trade. Uh, that Thorn Totem right there yeah. is such a huge deal right now. It's going to allow an additional 3-2 from I Kill You to survive this turn. Yeah, I think that's just the game then. Yeah, it it looks like it. There's no way for George C to stop the amount of damage. And I mean, it's a, that's a turn seven kill from the aggressive shaman. And people are wondering always, like, how do I, how do I stop cards like Call of the Wild from just destroying the game? It's like, well, don't let him play it. 
Yeah, that taunt totem ended up uh, really like saving uh, Achilles last minion. But to be fair, even if it was a searing totem, that one additional damage would have been enough to yeah. end the game. Yeah, it pretty much, you just needed any impactful totem. There's also the uh, totem golem, of course, being one of those outcomes as well. Uh, and this is just the power of the shaman in general to just get that win. Yeah, I kill you getting back on the board. Jot C, I think I feel like his hunter was not the worst kind of hunter to have against the shaman, but uh, didn't quite get there. I kill you had a strong start there, there played it well, and taking uh, what looked like an easy win. Yeah, super one sided game so far, uh, but I guess the best of seven just resets to a best of five. <laughs> uh, and we'll see what ends up developing for game number three coming up right after this, guys. First of all, I would like to say it's really rewarding to be here and participate in such event. It's really rewarding as well because I was so close uh, to advancing to so many other events uh, like IEM Katowice, like Biogame, Gfinity. I had a few obstacles uh, getting here, but with the support from Blizzard and the family, uh, I managed to overcome them and I'm happy to be here and compete on the on this stage. It's I feel awesome. So what sort of motivates you to keep trying to qualify? Well, I guess I had to finally do it. <laughs> well, to use his lava okay. burst and book his ticket. Congratulations. I like competition. After getting Legend, there were not that many challenges in Hearthstone, so I started playing uh, competitively in tournaments, then uh, working hard on ladder. When I failed getting to the other events, it just motivated me even more to do my best and try even harder to get to that. Talk to me about the championship tour in general. I love that everyone is equal. Uh, nobody is awarded something for nothing. And if you are working hard uh, and you are really uh, like committed to the game, you can also compete. And maybe next prelim nice, it might be you who will be competing in this tournament. It might be me. Uh, or maybe not you, me. but. <laughs> Or TJ. You know, TJ actually finished top 25 legend like just a couple months ago. Yeah, they say he's pretty good. Yeah, he's not bad. And we actually are all of our, well, obviously, Savit's in the house, of course. Probably the best out of all the, the HCT casters, um, at, at least playing at Hearthstone. And just at everything in life. <laughs> but, you know, second place probably goes to TJ, I think, just for the finishes. Or maybe by a killer. Okay, TJ could be third. Third, <laughs> third is the one with the treasure chest. That's not bad either. <laughs> all right, but I kill you there. Evening it up. After the first game, I was already starting to lean towards Josh C because coming to this match, I was seeing him kind of as the underdog just based on the lineups and that freeze mage. But uh, now now that um, I kill you is fighting back here, I, I would say that it's almost even. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll see what's coming up here. Both players can play Druid, and they're, um, you know we do have one warrior up for George C. Choose instead to stick to the Hunter, and now we have Hunter Mirrors. Now, I do know a few players, top level players, who are actually big fans of this matchup. They think there's a lot of um, early game nuance to what you do, even especially with the player who has the coin. Uh, do you like this matchup at all? I uh, personally, I I don't really like it that much. It's not my favorite matchup because of the the way that it uh, quite often one player might not have a, have a very good draw and the other one doesn't have that good of a draw, and uh, then uh, it's kind of it might come down to the draws a little bit too often for my taste, but in this particular instance, both players actually starting with uh, with really good hands, uh, curving out well. Uh, George C with those uh, one drops has a has a the coin for the Houndmaster potentially. I kill you also has a has the bow, which is a, which is potentially a huge right. deal. And you can just see that there's a lot of choices. Both these players played a little bit quickly um, before I could even process what was happening. You know, IQ already had the choice between the Kindly Grandmother versus uh, the Huge Terror, choosing instead to play a little bit more power, which ends up playing into the fact that his opponent has the Fiery Bats. And that's what George was doing to try to see if he could load up and save the coin. And then if one of these minions survives, say the Huge Toad doesn't hit on those two ones, then he gets the Houndmaster and he can climb ahead. This is an interesting thing. He could first play the Kindly Grandmother, kind of like try to get the hit on it, or he could uh, right. try to... Uh, yeah, okay, well, uh, I mean... Um, it, there's a lot of, like, uh, those death rattles can be so random, so I kill you is going to play it a little bit safer here, it looks like. Sure. Because he could have tried to, uh, like, eliminate both of uh, George's one-drops with just a huge to to death rattle there. 
not gonna take the trade. There's no real way for uh, Jolt C to punish this uh, face attack. Good call by you. Mm -hmm. Getting that damage in is often the difference maker on both sides. Yep. Because, uh, you know, George might be short, you know, a little bit of damage because he has to trade. And then, you know, I kill you as a result was headed damage. Yeah, in this instance, uh, it, was, it was strictly better in my in my books to play the kindly Grandma Trust, the 1 1 with the Death Rattle, not even try to pop the Death Rattle because of the Eagle Horn bow that is already there and the Houndmaster in his hand, which is uh, going to ha kind of have a guaranteed. Uh, beast to buff here on turn four yeah and that is a great amount of power that's been put and this is the swing that george c is is looking for plus he also has high main next turn and he already has call of the wild uh one of the important things of going first over your opponent in this matchup is that you can reach call of the wild first and you do tend to see call of the wild battles <laughs> where one person plays call of the wild the other person answers it and then it's back and forth yeah that going for the high main can also be a huge deal because of the lack of freezing traps it could be a really big thing there. Also, I wanted to say that uh, I kill you. A little bit disappointed by that uh, Barnes there, but it is uh, it is not that unlikely to find a minion without death rattle in these type of uh, decks. Even though there are a lot of death rattle minions too, like the Hymans. Yeah. In fact, I'm looking at Akili's list, and almost all of them. Uh, he has one. He has like Houndmaster and one King Zelic, and then everything else is minions that have pretty big impact. It oh, has yeah. Wolf, Tundra, Rhino, Savannah, High Main. That's true. That's a, that, that was a, <laughs> that was the worst possible outcome <laughs> from him, for him. Yeah. But uh, he is pushing a lot of damage here, regardless. Has a kind of a strong board and also a lot of reach with those uh, direct damage spells. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure for George to stop. It's really and is. KU is really uh, snowballing on the board here. Ooh, does the Unleash the Hounds change that? It, it does. That's an excellent draw because uh, one Hound uh, gets a good trade with that Barnes. He could quick shot the Houndmaster. He could uh, bump the High Main to the Kindly Grandmother, and uh, that would be a full clear with the uh, two remaining Hounds going into the 3 2. Yeah, full clear is pretty massive. George. I guess he's also wondering what's the value of keeping a cheaper spell versus playing quick shot and kill command here. Yep, that's what he's evaluating right now. Like whichever he goes with, he's going to hit the hit the hound master. He's going to choose to use the kill command here because after the call of the wild, the card draw from the quick shot might be extremely strong. Yeah, but that's three turns from now that he can use that quick shot. So I, I guess I guess it maybe just fits better with almost all of his mana plays. Like if if this is for example a Misha. He might get punished here for using that kill command over the quick shot. Yeah. Because the quick shot does not deal with the high man like the kill command would have. Yeah, it's it's an extremely good point. And I'm looking also at his deck list. I think it's because perhaps he feels like the quick shot has another chance of getting paired with something else, but he doesn't exactly have like a five mana minion. So it's no. not like he quick shot would pair well with This is a, a huge deal here if he doesn't find a like a, a nice way to do that. Kind of like an extra 2-2 two -two going to die to the mission now. So, um, okay. I mean, that does yeah. get the extra damage in. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and you know what? He didn't lose any real damage, too, from um, from the high main, because Call of the Wild will make the power 6 from those two. I guess you do uh, get the seventh damage. Yeah, if he kept the kill command there, he actually would have been able to like, save the unleashed hunts there. So the decision to that's true, that's true. to to um, to use the kill command over the quick shot on the previous yeah. turn really did backfire in this particular instance. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to like really th look at any kind of positive light, but I think you're just right here, Savi. It's uh, it definitely cost George, but will it matter if the po if he's getting the call of the wild here and being able to commandingly seize the board? And I kill you has just the kill command in hand. If he picks up another kill command, he will win the game if his opponent doesn't trade into his minions. Yeah, that would do it. And there's some other uh, good draws as well. I, I do think uh, he, he is playing, uh, uh, let's see, how many? One unleashed the hounds in uh, Aikilius deck. So if he, after a kill command, maybe got a quick shot into an unleashed, that would, uh, that would do it. Man, George is really taking his time to think about what ways he can lose. You know, it's how do I lose um, from this position? He obviously knows about double kill command, but that would require him to double trade into the, into the, or triple trade into the infested wolf. That's just way too much damage. That's loss. way too much. Like he, he doesn't have a lethal setup for the next. And I kill you does not find the second kill no, command. No, that's it. Game is over and just as fast as the previous two games as well. George C is up once again with a two-one lead. Yeah. Wow. It didn't matter that he went for the kill command over the quick shot there. Um, I kill you. Uh, maybe uh, slightly unfortunate with the, with the Barnes there, bringing a weak minion. But uh, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, a, it was a Hunter match, and uh, this time it was George C who came victorious. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, decisions in the very early game that end yeah. up coming to it, but the call of the wild was too big to come back from. And speaking of coming back, we'll be right back after this with game number four. So you are pretty young, 15 still, right? Yeah, seven uh, more days. Seven more days? Six more days. Six more days until you turn 16. So you only have seven more days to prove that you're the 15-year-old prodigy, because then you'll be the 16-year-old prodigy. Uh, there's been a lot of younger players that have had a lot of success in Hearthstone recently. Do you think there's any connection between younger players and being skilled? Yeah, there is. Like, when you're younger, you're like, your opinions can still be like shaped on things. So in terms of like playing different matchups, like it's really easy for someone to say, oh, this is the better way to do it. And you kind of adapt to that, whereas maybe if you're older or like you kind of like think you know how to play. Do you have a team or any like a group of practice partners that you play with a lot to sort of find deck lists and practice matchups? Yeah, because I'm not like currently tied to any organization or any team. I can talk to whoever I want. So I talk with like Zixa, Oskaka, Casey message like saying or whoever's online just you know just talk about the game and it just gives you a better mindset about the game talking with a lot of other people influences your decision making a lot well as rusty said play styles don't exist and i agree with them so like there's a better percentage play so instead of them like teaching me a, like a different play style as you said instead it's more like they help me find the higher percentage play based off of the situation how do you go about building a, a lineup of decks for a tournament but it's strange for me, like, most people would just look at the percentages or whatever, but I want to play, like Casey, decks that I enjoy. Because it's actually, I think it's better to play a deck that you enjoy over a deck you don't, purely because you play better with decks you enjoy. It's probably better for, like, casual players as well to play the deck they enjoy, because then they can become really good at it. Are you feeling confident going into the first match? Same as usual. Business as usual. Welcome back, everybody. If you're just joining us, it's been Fast and Furious, game number four, about to begin. The first three games uh, would basically, we'd be around turn six or seven right now in the Control Warrior mirror <laughs> to, for the equivalent of it. But uh, in the time it takes to finish three games, we already have seen George C take a 2-1 lead. Just has to win with his Warrior and Druid remaining up against Rogue, Hunter, and Druid. Yeah, those were some fast matches, uh, fast games that we saw earlier, but things are about to slow down. George C does have that Control Warrior remaining now as one of his two decks, and yeah. uh, it does include very slow cards such as uh, Sogot the Slitterer, so if he wants to get a win with that one, it's unlikely to be a quick one. I'm kind of expecting a Hunter pick here from um, uh, I Kill You, considering that it's the strongest against the remaining two decks. Yep. And he is going to go for that right now. And George C switches to the Warrior. This deck is definitely um, have has a breath of new life in it, just because of Ironforge portals and the way it kind of gives Control Warrior a lot more tools to be defensive. People used to think of Control Warrior just a couple months ago as just the Cthulhu Warrior. That's the only way you can reliably gain armor these days when Shield Maiden was rotated out back into Wild. And so with Shield Maiden gone, they're like, well, we can have Super Shield Maiden with the Ancient <laughs> Shield Bearer. Uh, and then Control Warrior lost one of its best tools. Now with Ironforge Portal, it's kind of back. Yep, there's a, there's a fighting chance here, but George C is definitely going to get to have a hard time against this Hunter. High mains, also the Call of the Wilds, those are really difficult cards to deal with as a Warrior player. I would, I would even go to say that the Hunter matchup is the worst one for, for the Warrior. At least one of the worst ones, if not the worst one. One thing that I'm excited about is to see if George's Saga the Sotheru can come out again and be a big player. Uh, I love that car because it's just the enemy from the entrance to the fact of like how just big and menacing it is. Just 5 9, you can't execute my minion or do anything to it. It's uh, it's pretty dope. Yeah, it re is really awesome. He's considering whether to play the Bloodhoof Brave or the Elise Starseeker. And personally, I would uh, prefer to see the Elise here so that if there is a Houndmaster coming out, the Elise with 3 attack and the Fiery Warax together are going to be able to take out the 6-6 Misha. 
Uh, by the way, Ikelio and his Tundra Rhino is a very interesting pick uh, for his deck. What, what is he really going for? Like, what is he trying to target, or does he have a specific game plan in mind, or does he just like the card, you know? I think he just wants to try to curve out a tiny bit better, because Hunter tends to have this uh, kind of an empty spot at 5 mana. Princess Huhuran, I do think that the card is actually not bad at all, but nobody really seems to be playing it. So I think it might be just to kind of fill out the curve at 5 mana. Mm -hmm. I miss the days when we play Kodo, especially Kodo on Blood of Brave type scenarios, um, but I can definitely see why it's a little bit inconsistent. Yeah, Kodo... Oh, that's not what he was hoping to get. George C really needed something better there. Yeah, about the Kodo, I do think that the Kodo is a very strong card, but the Hunter game plan overall tends to be very aggressive, and the Kodo is a little bit situational, so the Hunter playstyle just uh, suits better with the with uh, proactive minions instead of having a reactive card that might not find this opportunity. Man, look at that Tundra Rhino synergy. Because Kindly Grandmother summons, summons a big bad wolf that's also a beast, you can double attack with them, which just creates a huge board for the hunter. Oh, this is awesome to see. Here we see that uh, Tundra Rhino really pulling a lot of weight. And if it, if it does not get dealt with, and there's something like a high main to follow it up, that is charging six damage. Yeah, and it's also behind taunt, so it's not easy to remove. Yeah, that was oh, so man. much extra damage from that. Jossi would love to have a brawl here, but uh, unfortunately for him, <laughs> it does not have it right now. So he needs to find a different line of play. Yeah, perhaps Bloodhoof Brave and the Doomsayer could set up the most amount of health. I think you're not exactly expecting Doomsayer to activate. In the best case scenario, it does. In the worst case, it just gains you seven health. Yeah, that's an option. He could also try to kind of like desperately shield block maybe to find a shield slam for the Thunder Rhino if he's very worried about the high man. Yeah. Looks like he's going to um, go for the axe here and the Blood Hoof Brave, not having much faith in the Doomsayer effect triggering. Sure. King Selec. I kill you really <laughs> needs this one. Draws another beast if it wins the Joust. <laughs> another minion charge. Oh. oh, he gets an infested wolf. <sighs> That is going to be brutal. I, I was mean, saying that the, the Thunder Rhino might be there to fill out the curve, but yeah. it's certainly doing a lot more in this particular game. Yeah, I would say it's pretty good. I remember the days of Warsong Commander giving uh, <laughs> literally every other minion in your deck charge. That was also pretty nutty. Then they changed it to three attack, uh, which also was still nuts. And then, uh, you know, Warsong Commander. May it rest in peace. I've never seen a Thunder Rhino this effective in a in a tournament setting. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some Thunder Rhinos be played and not answered and called the Wild came out, but that was on ladder, and I was alt-tabbing to watch other Twitch streams <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> but uh, at least I have an excuse there. Yeah, just see here. Has to go for the shield block, trying to find something to play. Oh, it gets another bash, but that's no good. Shield slam would have been much better. With that, he could have maybe played the Doomsayer, played the, played the Shield Slam on that Rhino. Mm -hmm. Such a huge threat still. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it just uh, doesn't want to waste any more time. He knows that the, his chances to win are non-existent. Yeah, George Concede comes out there. <laughs> and now tied 2-2. I kill you, staying true to his name, as uh, we are going down to a best of three now, Savic. Just game for game, tit for tat. And with that, we'll be right back. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what you do outside of Hearthstone. What you when you venture out into the the real world? I love rock climbing. Uh, I, I like to say a lot as well. So sailing is sort of a unique hobby. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of new to it, but uh, my friend uh, invited me on a trip with other people from my uni university. It was probably the best holiday vacations of my life. What makes it so great is that you live in a kind of symbiosis with other people and everyone is helping each other and doing everything together. So in the evenings you, ca you just hang out by the campfire and uh, sing songs and just have a great time. Uh, some of them uh, are not that familiar with esports scene, so they just support what I am doing. It's great that I can count on them, and uh, what can I say? I am a lucky guy. <laughs> yeah. Four games in, 40 minutes down, Savits. We are 
on pace to finish this game and about 30 more minutes if it keeps going back and forth. Uh, and that would bring us to a game seven. We're down to Druid Warrior up against Druid and Rogue. Yeah, I'm not one bit surprised to be seeing these guys fairly evenly match when it comes to the score early on. We are about to get to the Druid games final. It's, be, it's taken a while. There's been so many uh, aggressive strategies. One of the players have been playing an uh, aggressive deck for, uh, I believe, uh, all of the all of the games so far. Maybe their first one was a little bit like more combo decks for both sides, but now it's going to be some Druid, ac uh, druid action, or maybe uh, we can see I kill use Rogue. Yeah. Now, this matchup, I think, is very interesting. I actually really like Druid versus Warrior a lot from both sides. I think Warrior tends to feel really comfortable if they yep. can um, get their armor count up. Um, and it's not like Druid is powerless. I actually really like in this... I really do feel like the Malagos Druid is like a true successor to a way of the Miracle Rogue, even though Miracle Rogue does exist in its current form. Um, but the version that uh, that um, George C... Oh, sorry. I Kill You is playing the, the, the Malagos version, right? I do believe that is the case. Yeah. It was George C with the, the, with token, the druid. token Druid, yeah. So uh, this one is going to be a Malagos game, and I'm George C in my books would have an advantage going into this one be just because of the armor ups and the tank ups it might keep him uh, out of the malicious combo range and also the amount of removal tends to be more more uh, efficient or more uh, uh, suitable against the, the low minion count of the malicious uh, druid over the the token variant yeah, it is a, a couple of interesting choices here. You see that I Kill You is running the Ancients of War in the Malikos version. We do see that some people are choosing to cut them. I think Muzzy and Frozen and Faith were the ones really trying to push other versions of it too. Yeah. But, I mean, if you expect a lot of aggressive decks, maybe it's not that bad of a pick. And Ancient of War can do a lot of work against Warrior if they can't get their armor counts really high too. Yeah, but it's certainly not like a, an amazing card against yeah. the Warrior because of the execution and the shield slams. I mean, one way to look at it is that if you see an execute on an Ancient of War, maybe the Arcane Giant will then yeah. avoid an execute, but Warrior could, could in uh, many cases have enough removal yeah. for each of them in any case. And this is a matchup where you actually kind of do want that gadget stand. A lot of times you're feeling like, oh yeah. If you play this deck on ladder, the Malagos Miracle Druid, and you're playing gadget stand, a lot of times if you're definitely like us, you get into situations where you're like, why am I ever playing gadget stand in this deck? <laughs> you know, I feel like I have no time to play, and if I do, I have to have Innervate in the hand. And then you just play matchups like Control War, and you're like, oh my goodness, Mal like gadget stand auctioneer in this deck is broken. And you start thinking about all these combos. Yeah, um, auctioneer is yeah. such a great card against uh, against Control Warrior because the, the biggest weakness of that one is that it's so slow. So if you're playing against an aggressive strategy. You don't really easily find the time for the auctioneer, but against the control warrior, yeah, you'll have the time. You always have the time, and uh, just getting those extra draws, drawing into your threats, drawing into your combo so much earlier it can be a huge, can give you a huge advantage. Yeah, but the reason why I like playing this matchup from the druid side is warrior gives you time to try to go off. So you know, a lot of times you always dream up these really magical scenarios, fandro combos with what you can do, or big Mali ghost damage. You often can do this in this matchup, so it's really fun to play, even though you are at a disadvantage overall. Yep. Uh, here, I don't think we're gonna see anything else, but uh, just a ravaging ghoul and uh, using that minion to remove the Fandral. I'm gonna save those uh, spot removal cards in his hand for later use for yeah. bigger threats. Yeah, Jersey has just a card in hands and um, Gore House, so pretty much has the armor and the removal in tandem to kind of keep up with it. One of the big problems with playing Gorhau in Control Warrior prior to Iron Forge Portal mm. was that Gorhau just means you're trading away so much of your life, and a lot of decks could really punish you for that. And back when you had Shield Maiden and a few of those cards, you had that that armor buffer. But now these days with Iron Forge Portal, you can actually have some of that. Yeah. I kill you choosing to go for the spell. That is the 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 choice that a lot of players are making, usually with the Raven Idol. But in this matchup, I actually wouldn't have blamed him if he just went for the minion and picked the biggest one out of there. But it is a little bit of a gamble because sometimes yeah. you only get two drops or three drops in yeah. there. Yeah. You get uh, Pompous Despian, uh, Ice Rager, <laughs> and you know the the, the Tiny Finn Murloc. And then, of course, sometimes you get like the random Alviana, and you're like, oh my oh, god, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, he does have a lot of big minions in his hand, so it might have been a little bit unnecessary in this particular instance. Maybe with the second idol, if he's, uh, he has run, run out of uh, big minions to play, he could at least consider it. Yeah, uh, I don't mind playing at least our Seeker here as well. Just uh, getting out a very reasonable minion. Yeah, the Bloodhoof Brave, not too bad either. I think it's a fairly close call. I think whatever sets up your Gorehow a little bit better, perhaps. So if you know your opponent is playing Ancients of War, at least plus the Gorehow kills it. Oh, that is true. 
He does have the Execute and the Shield Slam, but That's not true. enough armor right now for that. Is he going for the minion? No, going for a spell once again. He does have a lot of minions in hand. Not a lot of spells with Mali goes. Maybe looking for more Ooh. like Living Roots and Moonfires. So he is going for a bite here. He had the option to pick the Norwich, which often in a control match is the best possible card to pick up, kind of to be able to to get more cards to, to sustain yourself against the, the warrior, but he already has a full hand pretty much, so yep. the extra cards are not so valuable in this instance. Yeah, so you can see the setup here from George's anticipation for this was very much so. I clearly knows that his opponent has so many ways to remove it too, so he might as well get the Ancients of War out. Um, and plus, if Ancients of War are able to bait out and execute Geo Slams, that means the Arcane Giants get a lot swingier too, so that yep. you can use it as a final checkmate move. And uh, here comes the second Ancient of War from Aikilia. But George does have multiple different ways to deal with it. This could be a chance to finally get used out of Execute. If you know, or, you know, sorry, the, the Revenge in Execute. Revenge is really good against token versions. Not that amazing against Maligo's versions. Might as well get use of it if you can. Yep. Let's see which one he goes for. Okay. He has Ironforge Portal. Yep. And I what's his follow-up? He has Bash and then Co Slam. Okay. Next yeah. I think that works. He, he could go for that. It feels a little bit off. Maybe the Execute is the, is the better way to go. Okay. He's going for the Grom and uh, just going to use the weapon. Not afraid to be using his life as a resource. He knows that he has a, a lot of ways to gain armor later on. Ironforge Portal Bash. Even the Justic are in his hand. I really like this uh, play from George here. Yeah, it's actually uh, pretty... It's like it's like understanding how to win the matchup. You don't necessarily have to kill your opponent. You can just run them out of resources as well. Yep. You do have to eventually uh, transition to the, g the game life plan, but, I mean, he already has some of those important tools in his hand, just a car and you know, the portal. Yeah, we can see that there actually is the Maligas already for uh, like for I kill you. And uh, two Moonfires, two Feral Rages, so there's a lot of damage output. The Bite uh, is also something that we can't ignore. Yeah, that's why, that's why I like it, man, when you're playing from the Druid, even though I know it's like I, you're unfavored in the matchup. Uh, <laughs> it's just fun because you can do so much damage to your opponent. If you get yeah. to Living Roots as well, that's it, it a nutty amount of damage. It three, really would have. Like, he could have actually went for, like, Bite and uh, Feral Rage to, for face here and try to set up a lethal if he had, a, like, an extra Living Roots to go with the Malugas. But here in this situation, it would have been a little bit too risky. All right, Arcane Giant. Well, it doesn't really get much better with the Execute, right? Uh, not really. I mean, you, you do want to keep in the back of your mind that if your opponent just plays a Maligos, how would you answer it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you also still have lots of ways to gain armor if you play Justicar this turn. And then you can uh, just kind of answer whatever your opponent's doing. Yeah. He is considering whether uh, to go okay. for the Blood Who Frave and the Hero Power or the Justicar. Sure. I, I like this option, getting that two extra there. If he could play the Chastigar, he wouldn't be able to use the, the newly acquired, uh, upgraded hero power anyway. So right, right. might as well play the six toughness minion that uh, is probably more of a hurdle to remove for Aikili. Yeah, very much so. Easy wrath removal on the, the Jeskar True Heart with just three health. Yep. Bloodhoof Brave is an uh, interesting card. We don't see all that much of it, but uh, George C is bringing actually two of those in his. Uh, his lineup, and I kind of like the card. I mean, the six toughness taunt is so huge. There are some ways to, to get punished by by uh, cards such as uh, like Stampeding Kodo if you're playing in ranked play, bookworm. but here in yeah or Bookworm. Yeah. But uh, here in this tournament, uh, nobody really seems to be playing those cards, so so it's not an issue at all. <laughs> Speaking of not really being an issue, IQ doesn't really care taking the extra damage. <laughs> no. I know a lot of people be like, isn't that the wrong sequencing? of how you want to use it, but he just wanted to draw in case it would change his play. He, the three extra damage doesn't really matter too much in, in no. his book. Yeah, like the, the Chromash also was already played, so mm -hmm. not a big deal at all. That is the last uh, last uh, giant for Aikilio. He also played two of his Ancient of Wars. What Joss C might be thinking here is that while that um, Shield Slam looks fairly obvious and it's going to be very strong, he might want to save it for the, for the Malikos. But with the coin and the Brawl Sylvanas in his hand, that would be an additional way to deal with the potential Maligos. Yeah, I actually really like just removing the giant here. Um, and with, I mean, well, he, I guess he's thinking about also using his own life total on that. Ooh. I mean, in that case, I would, I would probably imagine he's going to go, go for the Justicar and just maybe like coin out the tank up because that is uh, so much damage. 
I, I, I don't know if I like taking. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think I like taking eight in this instance, but it might work out. It's a little bit risky, but good luck. Whoa! Oh my goodness. Well, I guess that pays off for the defender of Arcus in the previous time. Five mana, seven, seven, and four armor. That's pretty good. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> Is it the Orc time? It just might be for I can leave. I don't really know how else he can win this. Swipe Federal Rage Hero, but that'll be 9 damage, but it, he still wouldn't get his opponent down to the Malikus range. <laughs> Look at George! He's like, he's looking around like, did anyone see that? He's so happy with himself. I love it. Oh, man. Yep. <laughs> a, a lot of yeah. people saw that. <laughs> yeah, I kill you. Um, he can deal with this in multiple ways, but I think he's thinking about the best chances. Just playing Yogg, hopefully he gets one removal on it. Yep. Here we go. That's a good start. Okay. Uh, very mediocre things to nothing's happening. Oh, oh okay. Well, yep. that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of like removal. Yep. Oh. Nothing too spectacular. Well, there you go. So okay. Six damage. All right, does he hit the right target? He yeah. does. That actually was a significant amount of damage in the end. He got that uh, was it smite that he started out with, and now that frostbolt in the end. Yeah, and he also had the fish Draxus hit. Yep. So yeah, right, like around 10 damage this turn. Can and George C uh, has to deal with that Yog as well. No, yeah, I don't think uh, I kill you can be too disappointed with that Yog, considering how few spells it was. It was a very good outcome. Getting that secret too, competitive spirit, maybe not the greatest ever, but it doesn't do any harm either. It at least messes with your opponent's mind for a little bit too. Yep. You never know if it makes him make, makes him play awkwardly one or two times. Another swipe. Dang, it's a lot of damage if Malagos was able to get onto the board. Uh, I'm interested to see if Aikili just kind of like goes all in here. He could uh, swipe twice and maybe even innervate the Feral Rage to get the, to get 12 damage to his opponent's face. Then having the Malagos Moonfire Moonfire for next turn. Additional 12, but your opponent yeah, gain armor. It doesn't so. quite doesn't feel like it would be yeah. enough, but it might be a risk that he like has to take. Yep. Just hoping the top deck the last uh, leaving roots maybe. M maybe if he just Malagos goes all in and then just like destroys the kills the f uh, Jessica Trueheart and then just hopes he can double swipe next turn. Yeah, that's I'm also a fine play. Um, in the variants where uh, where players choose to play Emperor Thorison. And uh, I kill you actually does play the Emperor. Yeah. It is also an option to kind of like try to wait for that one and then try to innervate out the swipe to play together with the Malagos. I mean, I, I like the like what you Feral Rage and then you just kind of go in on Malagos. I feel like that's your best chance to win. He used two executes already and a shield yep. slam. I don't know what the chances of him being able to remove it are. Oh, he is going for that uh, hyper aggressive line. Okay, so he's going for the double swipe this time. And I hope that it, he has the damage to end the game. Yep, he needs that living roots from the top. It's uh, kind of unlikely, but I kill you. Does, in a way, have yeah. his back against the wall. All of his major threats have already been played. And George knows exactly what this means. He says your hand has to be a lot of direct damage if you're going to go for this win. Um, you're, you're fishing for one outer. So, you know, he has to gain armor as best as he can. Maybe even double bash the face. Oh, that's an interesting attack there. And did he? I'm like just thinking if he tested for an eye for an eye before attacking with a Justicar. <sighs> There's no way to really. I, don't I guess you could bash first to test. I don't. Yeah, like if he's bashing anyway, because it looks pretty obvious. So I kind of feel like he could have done that, but no punish here. The secret is a oh, competitive man. spirit and not an eye for an eye. That would have been nuts. Yeah, he just really would. I don't know if that would have actually made the difference if he didn't draw living roots. Because I think he would be able to regain it back with the bashes and then he would right. anyways. But man, yeah, that would have been not. hilarious. Yeah. George Whoops. C got a little too cocky at that point. <laughs> Going for one bash here. The second bash, would it keep, take him out of the Living Roots range? It would. I think it does, yeah. yeah. It puts him to 22, so now after that, uh, right. the damage potential from Mike Lee, not quite enough. So he's going to nourish. If he draws a way to remove the Justicar, he's still alive. So even if he doesn't get Living Roots, he can get Wrath. Mm -hmm. He can Moonfire that off, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, Moonfire it down and try to get Azure Drake to make up some of that damage. Yeah. Seems like he has to do it, really. I guess the Drake and the Moonfire. Yeah, my Keeper. My Keeper is one of those cards that I'm not sure how much I like. And that's why I actually appreciate I Kill You cutting it from his list. He has one of them instead of two. Yep. And that's where he gets the second Ancient of War. I also kind of like having just one Meyer Keeper. I do think one is excellent, but mm, 
I don't hate playing too, but uh, my also like my personal preference is the is the run two, uh, nice. one of one one. Big Daddy Sagath comes in, yeah, and, and probably gonna lock uh, I kill you out of the game here. There's no way for you to really get past that, so you're staring at yeah. a lot of damage. Uh, George C thinking whether or not to coin out the tank up here, but I think it might be better to hold on to it uh, because of the Sylvanas and the Brawl being the other two cards in his hand. And we just saw Moonfire happen. One Living Roach is gone, so. I don't think there's really any way for Aikilia to uh, kill Judge C even from uh, 18 HP. No, he's actually aware of uh, potential Raven Idol from Aikilia. You know, Aikilia actually has been very intent on not using his Raven Idol card. He had a Feral Rage that was taken off of the Raven Idol, so he's right. trying to hold on to it in case to mess with George's head. So that was uh, a nice little play there from Aikilia. Ooh, no Silvana spin runner from the from the portal, but that six six definitely quite solid. I, I believe it's uh, exactly average, at least close to average. Yeah, I think uh, it's like so, like one of the, one of those numbers is a five is average, but yeah, it's very close. Okay, so this. like five six or six five yeah. would maybe be average, so slightly above. And that is uh, definitely below average. Yeah, but the he did get mechanic. a flame breathed faceless from the first one, so... Yeah, it's all over the board, so to speak. <laughs> it really is. And I think the big thing is, I think George just wants to keep surviving. You know, I think the, the armor gain was even slightly more important for George. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, uh, I Kill You still has a little bit more gas, but he also might just deck out. This is uh, one of the problems with the Druid, you just might run out of resources. Yeah, he doesn't really have much remaining there. Oh, uh, I wonder if that's relevant at all. The fact that the Capaz Spirit went off and you can trade easily now. Yeah, it does help a little bit. Like having that 7-2 on the board now after Feral Rage kills the 2-4 is a huge deal. Josie does not have a way to remove it without taking at the 7. Okay, George uh, still has multiple ways he can brawl here, and then if the 7 2 survives, he can just kill it off. Play yep. Doomsayer. Okay, and for Thorazan survives, gives him opportunity to play the Doomsayer. No, I mean, it's better to play it than not to play it in my books. Like, why would you hold on to it? Jotzi uh, might be like kind of like a faking that he has a decision here, but. I don't think there really is one. Just was, thank you, up Doom, sir. Do you think it was necessary to brawl there no. from George? They didn't really have much else to do, but uh, the Silvanas would have been an option. It's interesting to think about because the problem that you know that your opponent does Maligos. Oh. How do you actually kill Maligos now? Oh, this is interesting. So this is what he was thinking about. So the Gorhal would kill that uh, Emperor over two turns, but he does end up taking a lot of damage from, from it in the process. He takes 15 damage. Yeah, that's right. And Aikilius last card, I believe he's a uh, living roots. I don't know, if I'm Aikilius, I probably just plot Maligos this turn and try to see how much mileage I can get out of him. Especially if I'm running out of cards, I might just have to use Maligos to hit face. Yeah, uh, this is it. Aikilius' final push. Yep. Just all in. Why not? <laughs> And just why don't, see what you got, George. If you can deal with this Maligos, I guess uh, George can just play Sylvanas and over the course of turns negate the damage in. So yeah. Yeah, that's going to do it. Yeah, I guess the, the, the tank up is just too much, and he didn't really want to go through the, the math portion because he would end up dying to fatigue anyways. George C ends up outlasting him anyways, and that's going to do it for game number five. Yeah, not surprised that it went like that. I would have personally, I would have maybe preferred I kill you, go for the minion discover at least on the on the second raven. I'll try to pick up an angel on threat. It might have helped him out a little bit. Um, but um, also, he, he got a fair yolk there. Like I don't think he can really blame it on like, oh, yolk wasn't very good, so, and that's why he lost. I think it was quite quite good removing the board from Jotzi, getting a secret, dealing was it nine damage total to his opponent. Yeah. But uh, there it shows that uh, the tank ups and the extra armor gain from. Ironforge Bottle too. It's a little bit too much for the Malagos uh, Druid to handle. All right, there you go. Game five in the books, and we're going to go to game number six right after this and see if George C can close it out. You've had to fly out to California twice to compete in these championships. What does what does your your family think of the whole ordeal? Um, they say it's fine as long as I. Do my schoolwork. So your your dad has been here twice now. Yeah. 
What does he think of the whole experience having to fly here and, and watch you play a game that he doesn't really know much about? I guess that is a blessing in some respect, right? He can't see me make mistakes or get unlucky or X, Y, Z, whatever. So, but yeah, he has enjoyed himself. Um, it's a new experience for him as well to see what it's like. But I know he didn't really know what Twitch was or anything, but he understands it's like, this is a community-based thing. It's not just a few people. It's like some worldwide thing, so. Do you think it's helped him understand uh, how important this is to not just you, but a lot of people who are in the same position as you and respect it more? Yeah, it is important for him to come into this room and have a look around, see what's going on, see the people behind it and how much effort goes into it. Because that kind of like legitimizes it in the sense that it makes it more worthy to pursue than it would be if all you can see is some people playing online. Man, it's really cool that George Dad is supportive of him. I wish uh, Fro Dad was as supportive as <laughs> me at that age than George D. <laughs> yeah, Papa C in the building. <laughs> His son is doing quite well right now. Uh, He's going to have two chances to to advance to the finals. George C only left with his token Maluk, uh, sorry, token uh, York Druid, and I kill you with his uh, Malukas Druid and his Rogue. Yep. So one more win separates George from. Uh, the finals and I kill you still has to win two more but if uh, history is any indicator we might be going to game seven because it's just <laughs> been trading games back and forth George getting the first win advantage and then I kill you being to respond we're going to rogue versus druid oh I really like the rogue hand here uh, Doom Pillager would also be a pretty good one to get but uh, questing adventure is an excellent card against the Druid in general, because you might sometimes be able to, to build it up to very high life total, where um, just the Druid removal is not efficient to deal with it. Jolt C, however, does have that mulch in his opening hand, so if there was an early adventure, he could uh, be able to deal with it. What gave the rise to Questing Adventure in Miracle Rogue? I mean, that wasn't one of the first builds of Miracle Rogue back in the day. Questing Adventure, as well as uh, Mana Addict, these were some of the cards that were being played, and they transitioned away from it. What made it come back? I think the Barnes is uh, definitely a card that uh, synergizes extremely well with it. If you pull it out um, early on with the, with the Barnes, uh, this in particular list from I Kill You does not even run Barnes, though, but uh, I, I find some uh, some cool synergy there. Questing Adventure, it might just be like a good uh, meta fit, and uh, it might have been something that would have already been working months ago after the changes to to Silence cards and the, and the Big Game Hunter, but uh, uh, or the Silence change in particular, but maybe people, it just took people uh, a little bit longer to figure it out. I, per I personally think that people have just realized how nuts Van Cleave can be. So yep. why not run three of them equivalent <laughs> to your deck? You know, just keep pushing out cards and pushing out cards and um, uh, making it go off. Because yeah. you're right, Silence being out of the meta is uh, been a pretty impactful. Um, a couple of play opportunities here from Ikelio. He can remove that Mire Keeper uh, after he coins out that Azure Drake through prep. But I don't know if he wants to commit that many resources to it. Yeah, I don't think you can use the prep here. Or, or I don't think he should use the prep here. There's so much value from it later with either the Edwin questing or just the auction here. So uh, Ikelio agrees. I'm just going to make the trade here instead of going for the prep shiv and uh, the weapon attack on that 3-3. Three, three. George can remove through either Wrath swipe. Uh, choose to swipe, it's a little bit clunkier. Wrath compared with the Violet Teacher. Very, uh, very understandable and logical plays here from both players so far. Yep, that, uh, the Violet Teacher with the Living Roots and the Power of the Violet could be huge for George next turn. And uh, here, I kill you, evaluating his opinion, uh, op uh, his options, excuse me. Uh, can't quite go for uh, something like Double Adventure or Adventure Van Cleave, but I guess just one uh, Adventure might be okay. Yep, just to test the waters, you can adventure, I guess, Shiv, and see where it leads to. You have your hands a little bit clunky, so yeah. maybe if your opponent doesn't even answer questing adventure, it starts to you know, have the upside of potentially getting really strong. <laughs> Another cold blood. Those could be very big if you got a minion to stick and uh, maybe picked up a conceal from the top. It would be so much damage dealt. Druid does not have any way to remove uh, stealthed minions. So having cold blood and in combination with the uh, with, uh, conceal can be extremely powerful against the Druid. Okay, rage, uh, Feral Rage, Claw, and Starfire. Uh, Feral Rage is definitely the most flexible for what you want. Yep. I'm ready to learn. 
All right, so back over in Achilles land, this is a turn where you can start thinking about Auctioneer if he oh. wants to. Oh, a conceal. It's a conceal. Let's see how he yeah. wants to navigate this. There's so many options here. Sort of like questing, questing uh, prep fan Edwin. It seems so powerful. Yeah. You could also just go for the questing if he picks up maybe, let's say, an eviscerate from the top. He could eviscerate and then conceal. Backstep. Unfortunately, it's a little bit uh, in, uh, in wrong order here, but uh, still so powerful. Jotzi would be in, uh, in a world of hurt if he didn't have the mulch right now, but... Yeah, no, no uh, roping required yeah. for this. And uh, actually, in just the perfect mana usage here to eliminate the questing adventure as well. And those are some of like the huge damage dealers in Ikuyu's decks. Uh, he does still have Leroy Jenkins, but I mean, he hasn't done a single point of damage to his opponent, and he's losing the board. Although he has gotten a very interesting yeah. minion off the mulch. That's a monstrous pickup uh, with those. Uh, <laughs> it's oh a my gosh. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Jotzi making a big board here. He already <laughs> saw one uh, <laughs> one fan of knives getting played. Second fan of knives in with uh, with spell power would be a uh, huge for I kill you. But he has neither spell power uh, nor fan right now. You're killing me, Savits. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Uh, Gajasan Conceal tries to dig deeper into the deck. Um, oh, another backstab. That's excellent. Now looking at George C's list, if he has a Savage or he does not. So it's not like he has he's afraid of that, but he is afraid of this, the um, the Raven Idol, which did pick up Fail Rage. So uh, ends up drawing a couple of decent cards here and has some other good plays. Tomb Pillager SI and of course the Boogie Monster, which lines up actually pretty well against this board, ironically enough. No, it's uh, it's not the worst thing. It might be is it that he he wants to lean towards just playing the double cold bloods and uh, like Tomb Pillager or something. Try to dig for the second conceal. Uh, just getting those extra cards from the auctioneer is, uh, is very valuable, and if he went with the boogie monster, he couldn't get the extra cards. Boogie monster. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, preparation. Prep. prep. That's, uh, I would say that that is the best card he could have drawn to kick things off here on this turn. Uh, yeah, he could have gone for the sap. The sap seems kind, of, seems kind of obvious on the giant, but the preparation does give that three mana discount. So if he's casting the fan of knives anyway, it would be more efficient to use the preparation effect with the three mana spell instead of the two mana. Yeah, has the ability to attach a cold blood, maybe even two, depending on uh, what he's drawing on the next card. Yep. Michael is just uh, hoping for so much for the for the second conceal. Yeah, it's a little bit tough because you don't want to just attach the second cold blood and, and all in on the hope that you draw conceal. Uh, you can get more damage onto the board here and part ways with your catch and sand. Yeah. It already did a lot of work. It helped draw a handful of cards, and you have a decent amount of power on board already. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think it would have been a little bit too much all in just going for the second cold blood ho in ho in hopes to pick up that uh, that conceal. So uh, sure, sure. I, I really like the Asai and the Tomb Pillager here. Let's see what George C can dig up from his deck here. Sounds like a the last swipe oh. would maybe be pretty good. Oh, I like this. I like playing the the game, the guessing game on what he drew. <laughs> uh, nice card pack, by the way. Well, I was probably looking for the golden celebration card pack we can get later on. <laughs> uh, it is a violet teacher. Not the greatest card here. I, I would. I wouldn't be surprised if he just went for another draw here. He could also draw the tree. It is pretty nice to remove that. Arcane Giant afterwards. If he wanted to, he could even Feral Rage to remove the last minion from the board as well and then uh, innervate out the Arcane Giant. Absolutely, I like that play the most. Set up the strongest Giant possible and then force your opponent into an awkward position. Yep. And Akiyu actually doesn't have a direct answer to the Giant yet, unless he picks up Shadow Strike. Yep. Leroy Jenkins. Uh, there's a lot of damage with the Leroy Gold Blood, Eviscerate, and the Weapon Attack. That would be 15 damage total. But I, Jot C does have 22 HP still because he had that uh, early Feral Rage. Okay. Eight armor. No. How good is the well, Boogie Monster's base stat lines actually don't line up well against the Giant, unfortunately. It's it's actually like decent stats against Druid. Druid can't really remove it, but if they have the 8-8 on board already, that's problematic. Yep. Hmm, I guess it has to do with the Boogie Monster. I mean, just looking at those options. He could also maybe consider uh, cycling the fan here and uh, hope to pick up another minion <laughs> to play with the Tomb Pillager. 
I can't. I, I want to see George's reaction to this. <laughs> when the Boogie Monsters... Actually, I've never seen Boogie Monster play from the hand. I've only seen it summon. Not even in a Golden Monkey match? I, yeah, in, it, well, I mean, I've seen it being summoned through, like, Confessor Pale Tours, but oh, never yeah. really through... Not even, I, I, even if I get it off Golden Monkey, I've never really played it. Yeah, it doesn't really see all that much play. It's a little <laughs> spooky, man. It's, it's like comes out from a bunch of a purple portal of full of tentacles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already have seen enough on the internet to know where that's going. Well, uh, George C., uh, he can answer this just with a direct trade. Choose to play the Emperor and probably the Violet Teacher, just two minions as opposed to one. Yep, and uh, I kill you. Need some help from the top of his deck. Oh, that, that that's some help, I would say. Yeah, Gadget Sand with coin. Yeah, he gets to cycle to uh, more of his deck. He does have the coin, the fan, and the Eviscerate. Those are at least uh, four cards will be drawn. Three from the extra auctionary effects and uh, the one from the fan. All right, so Deadly Poison can continue this cycle. Yeah. Rest in peace, Blade Flurry. Um, I be? kill you, but he's, he needs a little bit more. He needs like Shadow Strike. To get, the uh, he's looking at the. He's considering the Deadly Poison here. If he's going for that, I would imagine that he's like really going for the for the last conceal, but the chances to get it are, are pretty high at this point. There's not that many cards left in his deck. Mm -hmm. It's almost guaranteed that he gets it. Well, I mean, he still has, he still can hit a couple of deads here, or duds here, Asdrig being one of them. Mm -hmm. Has he used both of his preps as well? I think he has. I think the preps are gone, yes. He Five to... cards remaining, so can't quite guarantee the conceal. Fan of Knives. Oh no. no, he's running out of time as well, so he's forced to make awkward plays. Sap. Oh, does he have a time to go? Oh no. Ah, I don't know. Oh, he, oh, he got it, it off, okay. he got it off just in time. The, the funny thing about it though is that they, it might have been more valuable for the Ancient of War later, but like uh, from his point of view, it certainly seemed like the, the strong, strongest play to do. Sure. Raven Knight to see uh, what he can get. George C can look up for a bunch of stuff. Oh, the wild. Um, Mark of Nature seems. Like the only choice here. I think it might, can be kind of huge. He knows that Ikea yeah. is running uh, out of uh, resources, running low on cards. So being able to make a big taunt, maybe out of the Emperor Taurus, can be a huge deal. Yeah, Ikea is uh, running out of breathing room here. Yeah, he needs a Yog, but he doesn't play one. So <laughs> I don't really know how he can climb out of this one. Okay, there's the Conceal. He has oh. Azure Drake, Fan of Knives. That's that's actually not so bad. He can uh, he can uh, Drake and uh, Pillager here maybe conceal those. Oh, okay, that's also yeah. I like that a lot better. Yeah, he, maybe he he might be able to pull this off after all. That Shadow Strike, even though both Saps are played, that Shadow Strike is going to help a lot in dealing with that uh, huge taunt. But that Mark of Nature, the extra taunt might be too much. Yeah, uh, you know, with Shadow Strike and Fan Knives, that's 10 damage, right? If he puts the Thanos onto the board. Yeah. So that allows him to get through the Ancient of War and clear even if his opponent had Power of the Wild uh, pick up. Yeah, for Lethal, though, he, he unfortunately, because he wants to play the Leroy and the Cold Blood, so there wouldn't be enough mana for the Blood Rain, so total in 11. Yeah. I guess he would trade his Tomb Pillager. Oh, yeah, that's but that, that's an option, certainly. So he could get the coin from there. Okay, so what does George do to respond to this? Uh, knows that both Savs have been used. Maybe he loads up more onto the Ancient of War. Maybe he taunts his Thorson as well. Yep. Yeah, it yeah, certainly seems like the, the, you know, the obvious play to get that uh, second big taunt. And, uh, I'm ready to learn. I clearly is about to be doing some math here. Yeah. 19 health still, and those taunts combined are 19 power, uh, 19, 19 toughness, so. Yeah, and he's out of cards, so he oh. needs to make this work right here. These are the six cards remaining in his hand. Uh, otherwise, it is lights out and his dreams for HCT World Championship has ended. Oh, it's just, it's just like, oh, this, is some, this is actually some serious math here. This is a, like in a high pressure situation like this. That's not an easy mm -hmm. task to do. How much is this like? What's the optimal play? Like he can get the coin from that Tomb Pillager. So there's the Shadow Strike, Eviscerate, Cold Blood, Leroy. <sighs> I, I'm, I'm feeling the pressure, man. Yeah. It's really hard for me to count. I'm thinking Blood Mage has to be part of this because Shadow Strike and Fan Eyes is almost too clean of a removal. Mm -hmm. But perhaps um, he's not going to use that. Instead, chooses to use the Cold Blood. 
Okay, so he does want to go for this play. Mm -hmm. And the clean removal. That's six damage, by the way. Wow. And that is very nicely done. It's very clean. I like it a lot. And he's putting in the pressure. And plus, he's got the 10 damage from hand. Has he done this? How, how much damage? What if he does a swipe? Because the extra draw from Blood Mage. No, I, no, but he's got, got ten. He's got ten. Oh, the extra oh, card draw from the, the Blood Mage. card draw does the extra damage as oh, well. No. <laughs> oh my goodness! And George C is going to the grand finals of the Europe Summer Championship. Winning the series four to two. What a series that it was! was. Now that, that, that's a game that I approve of. <laughs> oh, that's just amazing! What a finish to it as well. Dang! I, I, I kill you. Almost able to climb out of it. It looks kind of bad at, at times, but uh, wow! That was quite the series. Going to game number six, but we do have our first finalist from the UK, it's George C off the back of some stellar play, beginning with Freeze Mage, ending with his own variant of the Token Druid. Big shout out, of course, to I Kill You. Semi-final finish is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, certainly a good run from I Kill You. He put up a good fight there. All right, so we have our winner, George C, waiting with Raven for a few words on his victory. Thanks a lot, Frodan, and congratulations, George. You are in the finals. So um, first question is going to be, uh, how important do you think getting the Freeze Mage versus the Rogue was in the opening matchup, just to get that one out of the way? Well, it basically won me the series because he was probably favoured on paper to beat it, like, above 50% in a lot of the matchups. So what the idea was, you queue it first because he doesn't think he queues it. And even if he randomises his decks, has a 1 in 4 chance of getting Rogue. So it should theoretically be better to just queue it because he doesn't think I would queue it. So he might just queue Rogue to try to get a win against one of the three classes. Yeah, it seemed to work out pretty well. And uh, final one, who who would you prefer to play in the finals out of Dr. Hippie and Demon? Dr. Hippie even said to me yesterday that I would win because his, his, line, his lineup's weak to my freeze mage, so he has to ban it. <laughs> it seems like a pretty good reason overall. So the next match we've got coming up is going to be Dr. Hippie versus Dizdemon to decide